Welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. In 1914, Woodrow Wilson is the President of the United States. In Europe, Archduke Ferdinand is assassinated, setting off a chain of events that lead to the start of World War I. Also in 1914, Charlie Chaplin makes his film debut in the film Making a Living. In Washington, D.C., the first stone of the Lincoln Memorial is put into place. In Rochester in 1914, the bandstand on the Rochester Common was built. More than 100 years later, the bandstand is still there. It evokes memories from another era when bands entertained large crowds at the Rochester Common. Before then, bands held concerts downtown in front of the Parson Main Monument. These concerts were popular and sometimes held twice a week. The large crowds that attended these concerts interfered with downtown traffic. A new location for the concerts was needed and the Rochester Common was selected to be the new home of a permanent bandstand for these concerts. Fundraisers were held to pay for the new bandstand. It was a popular cause and many in Rochester donated, including former Mayor Joseph Warren, who contributed almost $150 to the project. Local contractor Miles Dustin and his two sons built the bandstand. They finished it by July 17, 1914 at a cost of $500. A December 1914 newspaper article broke down the budget and the two biggest expenses were lumber and labor. The Rochester Lumber Company charged $210 for the wood used in the project and Miles Dustin charged $192 for his labor. Electrical lighting was installed the following month. The platform for the band to perform is eight feet from the ground and covered with a dome. Miles Dustin was a master carpenter and he designed the space beneath the platform to be used for storage. The entrance to the storage area is through a door on the northeast side of the bandstand. During concerts, this entrance was used to sell hot dogs and beverages. Originally, the bandstand was designed with shutters that were installed in the winter to protect the open area. Through the years, these shutters disappeared and were never replaced. Most of the time, the structure has been painted green and white, but for a short time, the bandstand was painted red, white, and blue. Band concerts at the Rochester Common became a popular pastime. Many bands played there, but the most popular was the Rochester City Band and the Hanson American Band. In September 1938, the most powerful storm to strike Rochester occurred. It is known as the Great Hurricane in 1938 and had powerful winds and slashing rains. The bandstand withstood the wrath of the hurricane, but many of the trees in the common were knocked over. And here were a couple of pictures from 1944 showing the Rochester City Band inside the bandstand. In 2000, it was discovered that the wooden bottom of the structure was rotting and in dire need of repair. In 2001, the roof of the bandstand was removed with a crane, a concrete foundation was poured, and the bottom of the bandstand was rebuilt. The large domed roof was added back to the new and improved bandstand. Even though the roof is the only original part, it still looks like it did in 1914. Also in 2001, the bandstand's historical significance was recognized when it was added to the New Hampshire State Register of Historic Places. After the bandstand was built, Miles Dustin stayed active in Rochester. He was involved in local politics and he founded the Rochester Historical Society in 1950, becoming his first president. This ends the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email bobgriffinpodcast at gmail.com. And come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History.